Yo, what is going on, everybody? Champ 2, Division 4. I think one more win and we get to... Back to, I should say. Division 3. Let's get into it. And, uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks for all the replies. Uh, it seems that everyone pretty much prefers the style of going over the replay after. I just got to clean it up a little bit. That's fine. So I'll try and do that as we go. And hopefully today we can get two wins out the way. Get into Champ 3. That is the dream here. And we're just going to hit that on towards the backboard. And there might be an opening. You see how the first man missed? They shouldn't really. But uh, that's why you can do that. Shooting towards the backboard hard to create those kind of openings. We're, we're semi-deep here. Not as deep as normal. We didn't need to be because there was actually no pressure from this side. Um, so we can just quite happily try and get a little speed burst through. And uh, this is going to be no danger at all. You can see Nurim backing off there. You can actually catch into our favourite. And it's going to take one out. There was actually one ahead as well. But that's uh, a wave dash of depth from me. So if we got past the last one... Jobs are good, you know. And we're back into it. We can turn here. We can actually pressure this. Okay, guys. Here's the goal again. We're going to watch it from this perspective. And then we're going to break it down. And I want you guys to make notes when we do this. What do you see? And hopefully you'll see something quite incredible right there. Okay. So the two things is I want you to watch Fadium and Kira. Fadium, instead of coming here or deep and getting outward momentum or being patient, they're going to cut across. They're going to actually take their momentum in this line. But they're going to challenge the ball here. We're actually the main challenger here, and we tried to get as straight as possible with forward slash outward momentum, whatever you want to call it, towards the ball, which means we're going to win the 50. If Fadium realizes as we uh, push forward here, you see that little wiggle they do? As Fadium realizes they're on the inside, you see how they're more on the inside of the play, like that, then they need to realize this because they've come at an awkward angle, and you can tell that by their boost. You know, the boost is in one line, then it goes like that, whereas ours is more of a curve. Okay, that's what you're more aiming for. Now, if they're on the inside, brilliant. All they've got to do is hit the ball here, side flip to the left, and they're completely safe. They're going to force it into the corner. Whilst that ha that's happening, which is what they don't do, by the way, they just do a normal challenge, I want you to look at Kira. Kira, the crossbar master, is just chilling out, chilling out, chilling out, and therefore, they've got no rotation back post, and it's an open net. Like, double jump or single jump, but don't try and flip into it, but look how we rotated in the air. So think about your next step, you know, always have uh, a plan to get out. So we're rotating in the air because we're going to use our momentum onto the, uh, the inside of the net to get back out. We're going to fake that. That should be safe for our last man. We're going to come up here and just tap it to the side. Just a little tap there, nothing mechanical. The little area, and hopefully we've got two players who can get some outward momentum there. Unfortunately, just because of the setup time, we didn't have true outward momentum. And we're just going to wait here. Teammates there, that's a really risky fake. Now, one of the fakes you don't want to make is a fake when there's a chance to score. Um, what I've seen people do in twos especially, I was playing twos last night on stream, just quickly ran to Grand Champ, um, was that people will fake off the center line. And it's so dangerous to do that. If you're going to fake, don't fake yourself away from goal side. I should have just shot that straight away. Just didn't have the confidence. Just got on. We're just going to try and pop that again and look for our exit plan. There's the exit plan. So straight away, we land with a single jump. We don't want to dodge just in case. And then we drive backwards into a wave dash for an exit plan. And I didn't even need to go up here because we got a teammate right there. Okay. And here is that goal again. And I want you to watch this one. Okay. So the ball comes round and it gets hit in. Now, this could potentially be on me. And it depends who's coaching you and what their sort of belief system is. Okay. From here, personally, my belief system is that this player should have come and grabbed the boost, sat here, and then actually forced the ball sort of upwards and across. That's just personally to me, because uh, Fadium is sort of flipping this direction, and we've also got a player over here, so they might be able to switch the ball. However, there will be other coaches, everyone has a different opinion, like Verge, for example, he believes that the, the player in the net should go out and challenge the ball. Either way, it was a cracker of a shot, and that goes in. My fault. Or Void's fault? Yes, absolutely. It's one of us. The way they were rotating, they had plenty of opportunity, in my opinion, to uh, make the save there. We're actually going to just steal that boost. We're going to wait here. This is an opportunity. If he hits it... Oh, my God. What a weird hit. So, get a demo. All right. So, that's just doubling up. If they didn't double up, we could have got a demo and actually put that in. But they just came out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, a little bit too ag uh, aggressive. And we're going to just rotate towards the back post here. Trying to keep our eye on the ball. Flicking in and out to get pads. You don't have to do that. Obviously, if you can do that without looking, even better. So, we're going to get bumped. You know, this is the general strat. Um, so, I can't go for that. And good job at the uh, protection of the front post. But that's a pointless hit. See how they're just in the corner? They need to get out the corner. And I'm going to actually take this because I haven't had a chance to play the ball yet. And I'm looking down. I'm looking down. And then, okay, okay. They can't score from that position. So, I don't need to do anything. 
And we're one on up. You know, I don't want to take any risk here. Both players are in the corner. So it's going to be very hard for them to score. Uh, this is what we're seeing a lot of uh, at these ranks. It's just people double committing in bad areas. So technically, this is my ball, you see. I kind of like that guys earlier, in my opinion. Now, everyone's got a different opinion on it. That should be an easy save. I don't know where our last is, though. We're going to get the fake there. Look for the demo. So, yeah, our last man didn't rotate there. We're actually going to backflip into that. I'm going to backflip half-flip challenge there. And then I'm just going to flick it over the top. And then I'm just going to look for a bump. And I'm going to turn. And I'm just going to look for a reshot. And I'm just going to keep doing this until someone can pull the trigger and get a shot. That should be it. That should be a goal. Yep, there we go. Okay, so... One of the things I say is most underrated for most players is when you've got space, backflipping in the corner is really good because players don't expect it. And then a quick flick. Straight away, we love to do the grounded stuff. Flick it high, make it difficult. It doesn't have to go in, it just needs to make it difficult. From there, we're looking for demos into boost opportunities. Now, we've got a player here, Void, who is also coming in. However, in my opinion, they're a bit too far. You see, I'm able to turn and get the shot before they're able to get there. And I'm going to take it because realistically, I should score this. Uh, but we put it high and that's not a problem. I know people say, you know, shooting early, you, you tend to be less accurate. Absolutely, you will be less accurate. But that's because it doesn't matter. We're putting in pressure on. We're, we're trying to starve people down and they are going to react, as you can see here. So it doesn't really matter if you miss. From there, again, we look for another demo into a boost grab. You see, rinse and repeat. Meanwhile, we've basically collapsed them in the net, okay? And they, they're struggling. So Void comes in and puts it back onto the backboard. And everyone's diving across. They're overreacting and they just can't get defended. Like, they are just collapsed in net. There's too many misses. And again, and I don't want to pick on anyone in particular, but Kira just not fast enough getting to the spots and is just making it very difficult. They should have sort of rotated in. turn on balls and it might seem like unfundamental and it might seem bad but you can absolutely do that if you're in a very powerful situation and uh, as you can see it led to a goal and i think the, the one earlier did we're left at the back here on our own so this is what i'm saying they're pushing up very great they're still like right ahead which makes no sense so we're going to try and get a, a burst reset there ahead we're actually going to touch that that was actually not a bad pass i wasn't going to go for that initially they weren't in the best spot in my opinion but uh yeah it's there uh, you know, so we might as well take it. Now, I'm going to fake going up for this, but I'm just going to burst, like, come at them to make them think I am going to go for it. But more so to boost steel. And you can just see that really that uh, we're having a bit of issues with our teammates running a bit far ahead in, uh, for my liking, especially with a lead. There's no one at the back here, so we uh, we definitely want to take advantage of that. We take a boost lane. And then we got the boost. Now, you see how they're backed off? So this teammate shouldn't be in our corner waiting for boost. Like, we just boost off them, and then we lose pressure instantly because they're at their back corner. And we give them no problem. Well, they've got to do something on that, though. They needed to uh, definitely challenge that. So this Anixor is making this really difficult. Oh, better save the replay. Making this really difficult. And again, they're just, you know, they're, they're trying to do... Did we see voice crawler? Like, voice crawler, come back, please. So now I can't go as early as I want to, which adds more pressure on. Because I wanted to go earlier and challenge that, but they're just taking too long to get back, and I don't feel comfortable... With a lead, you know, this is the thing. With a lead. If I didn't have a lead, maybe I'd be a bit more aggressive here. We're going to come up here. Yeah, see, this is why I don't like to go for balls. Because they're just not in a, a good position to make a save. I was late getting to that ball. I didn't need to take the risk. I, I really didn't. But I didn't want two of us uh, to sort of be in there. And again, they've double committed there. We're just going to pop it to the corner. And um, we're just going to hope that they actually come back and do defend him. Because we've got a lead. And there's literally five seconds left. And they're still not back to defend that annex or... I don't know what they're after. There we go. GG. Well played. Tough game. You know, people sitting ahead of the ball does my head in. Yes, you can sit ahead of the ball, but only do it in the right situation. If you do not have the boost or you do not have the ball and you're getting collapsed, then your teammate needs to know that. And we are now champ free, baby. Finally, there we go. Pretty good uh, run overall in this uh, series, surprisingly. Here we go. We're with Ironcore and Moses. And we're against uh, Valdor and Eeks. And we're going to win that kickoff and grab the mid. And I'm going to save the replay before I forget. My save replay button is space. And space also for keyboard and mouse uh, defocuses. Which is why that keeps happening. So I, I, all I need to do is actually change that. So we just do a double jump there to beat both players. Okay, so the game's pretty much just started. Get a little fake there. Again. You don't have to challenge these balls you can fake. There is no danger here, and it allows a free scoop up. I want you to watch that again, because people underestimate this little wiggle here. And that's it, all it is. And you see by me doing that, it forces him up. And now he's awkward. And now he also doesn't get the boost, okay? 
Now here, we can turn. Iron Core could also go, go, but here I like to turn because it allows a quick flick. Iron Core could also shoot this, um, but I'm glad they left it because we're just able to flick it up. Now straight away, what do you notice here? What do you notice from their defensive position, okay? What do I always say about the last man? What do I always say about last man? This is the last man, this John guy. He's just come in. And first of all, challenging towards the side, which is always dangerous. No forward momentum. You see how their boost is going across, but they're pushing forward. Again, guys, we're like the last game. Look at the boost difference. I want to move the ball forward. Look at the boost. It's a straight line. They're trying to win a 50 across. Look at the boost. They're boosting this way, but they're trying to challenge the ball this way. That's how simple the game is, guys. Momentum, okay? You double jump here because there's a double commit. That's all you got to do. Just double jump. It plays onto the back, uh, the backboard and it gets a bounce. This last man, I got to give them credit. They did exactly the right thing, but they just couldn't get back in time because the last man overcommitted. It's all about the team, though. That's what I always try and stress to people. It's all about the team. I'm not trying to do, like, shots and stuff there. I just want to pop it over players. Popping the ball is so effective. I'm looking for a demo. I'm actually getting really bad at those. Players seem to be dodging even higher than ever before, so that's something I need to... Uh, amend from my own point and that's something you're gonna have to do you know if you if you see things happening over and over again you gotta say okay well i can do this oh we're gonna wait for another pop here there's an opportunity we're gonna jab that up i'm looking for a bump on them as they jump so they get uh, stomped down and again i can use all my boosts there if people are saying like why did you use your boost because there was a boost there you know why wouldn't i and we're actually gonna play that to the side oh nice speed i wanted it more towards our corner but that's fine we're completely safe here and we're gonna take those bumps and go to the back post completely safe we were absolutely safe Wow, what a 50. We're going to come here, come here. We're going to come onto the back wall. Uh, we're just going to wait. We're just going to wait. <laughs> uh, there we go. We're going to come down and grab this. Just in case. I think they're over there, but yeah. That's a great opportunity. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Now, if they would have popped it, we could have probably scored that. In fact, I'm going to quickly... Where's my button? I need to get a button on my controller to uh, to start saving these replays. I would gonna, gonna have basically do really bad plays, I feel. So, we're going to wait. And we're going to fake. And there we go. And then we're going to backflip. Just to take them out. Now, our teammate went for the corner boost there. And then actually did miss it. So, that's a double whammy. So, we're just going to wait. Just going to wait. And there's our flick. And over to our teammate. Does that look familiar from the last episode? That flick over to our, towards our teammate? Yeah. And there we go. You don't have to do stuff over the top. Now, hopefully, they can just tap this either across or in. And again, they're looking for finishes. Oh, that's a really bad shot. Jeez, what the hell? Um, yeah, but they're looking for finishes. All they have to do is get under it and pop it. I can't stress that enough. The, the popping the ball is probably the easiest way to score in this game. In uh, in twos and threes. Honestly, I really do think it's completely underrated. I'm actually going to turn there. And I'm going to drop a sorry in a second. We're going to have to bump into them. I wanted to turn because I wanted to get more of a lift on the ball. Because I know they're shooting. And we're not really going to be able to create off shots. So I'm just going to fake them. And then we're going to get the free ball. And then we're going to just push it forward with a flick. Like, we saw them coming in with their teammates over to the side here. So they're not going to be able to do anything. So we don't have outward momentum challenging. So now we've just been collapsed. Uh, and that's what's caused that. So we're just going to wait. Oh, okay. All right, I'm actually going to shoot it at them just to make it difficult. Teammate didn't need to go for that. Let that go for the teammate. Wasn't the best shot, but the teammate was sort of lingering in a position where the opponent was. Uh, which makes it very difficult to recover. Hey, I've got it, buddy. We're just going to come behind the ball. And you see, again, we just got players pushing forward when we're getting... If we're getting 50, there's no point really pushing forward. That's very optimistic there. Uh, especially like again i suppose it comes with time you'll sort of know which which ones your teammate has and which ones they don't we're gonna fake that onto the backboard and we're just gonna keep it out you can float across here if you wanted to get an, an extra touch on it nothing special you just tap and boost a little bit and barely putting an input and that's probably where people go wrong is they like over input and there we go no problem but just be aware of that if you see me there don't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just come out of ball cam, just check, and then go go lower or, or rotate towards back post, which is a very novel idea. And we're going to come here, and we're just going to wait. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. Now I'm just going to single jump, and it's still in the corner. Brilliant. I'm safe. And I've took the boost. And there's the overcommit, and I'm going to put it back towards the corner. Now, these guys have no boost. There you go. Look, this is what I say to people. The corner is the safest place. I'll put it back to the corner. They go, that's stupid. Is it? Because look at them. People don't rotate properly, which means they just push it to me. It's a strategy, guys. It begins with this corner play here as the ball's hit away. Now, how many people would just smash this? There's no point smashing this. Look what's going on here. We've got a player who is sat here. They're not going to be any good for me, are they, if their nose is facing this way? We've got a player all the way over here. How am I going to pass it to them and beat this man? They're, they're too close, and they've got the inside position. It's not going to happen. I'm not that good. This player is coming in. This player's on the same side, okay? 
perfect. I don't want to hit this. If I do want to hit this, I want to try and outplay them by either lifting it up, bringing it down. I want to do something to outplay them, but I need to wait a little bit to, for them to get closer. Remember, with the closer they are, the more intel we have. So we wait. And when they come in, all we've got to do is single jump because look, they're going to push the ball. So many people get confused on corners. Look, I'm going to rake it down. People push the ball. When you push the ball, it lifts off slightly. We're going to slow mo this real quick. Right? So all we got to do is single jump here to block it coming across. That's all we got to do. We single jump. From there, two players go up again. Let's have a look at this. Look, there, there, there's no definitive back uh, last man here. They both... They, they, there's not really a rotation which forces both players up. And Moses didn't even have to go for this, but fair play they did. And now that gives us a free ball. It's a heavy touch from me towards the wall. Maybe not the best thing to do, but because this player has rotated in such a manner and then they flip into it, they just could have touched it and then flipped away. They flip into it, they're going to take it past the last man who is pushing up way too far. And you're going to see the last man here do a turn towards the... They get it towards the inside, actually. They're going to do a turn and it's just going to open up the net. And again, this last man just cannot get back too fast. I do feel a bit sorry for them. And we're going to come here. And I'm just going to fake that. And I'm just going to fake it again. And that should be a goal. Okay, that's good. They popped it. Look at this. They're popping it. That's my point. That's my point. This is exactly my point. Look. This looks like rubbish, right? They're popping it against the backboard. They're popping it against the backboard. I go, okay, it's a goal. Because you're doing what I asked you. And that's popping the ball. How simple is that? We're almost at Grand Champ. And all you got to do is pop the ball into the air. That's what I'm trying to explain to people. Okay, so there's some mistakes here. As you can see, I turn onto the ball and Iron Core's gone. And so me, Moses, and Iron Core are pretty much in the same area. But that's not a problem based on the defense. Now, because they're so clapped, we don't have to worry. If this was a higher level lobby player would have probably like jabbed the ball up towards the air come off and then look for an eligible ceiling shot okay then we would have been in a bit of a pick on i'm not gonna lie to you but we still would have been able, uh, been able to get back in time because they're so collapsed and they don't know what to do all i call has to do is flick this ball and you will see again why do i always bang on about defensive position as the last man being so important if he's here he's fine if he's here in the net facing this way he's fine he's not he's shallow and he's already curving out he's basically beaten here this is why popping the ball is so good because people have no idea how to defend intelligently. So we pop the ball, which forces this player to dive. Great. Pop the ball. So that player's out. They're, they're way out because they've overcommit. This player, instead of coming back to the back post, is eeks. They've gone for boost. Well, it doesn't even matter if they get it because right now this is a 2v1. And the ball's bounced away. Valder is in a real bad situation. When you see the player high, shoot low. They do actually do a good dive bomb there. And if they would have backflipped, they would have saved that. So it wasn't the best finish from me. You don't need to be clever. You just need to pop the ball off the backboard. That's all you got to do. Just pop it off the backboard or pop it into the air. It'll set up the next man. All right. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to save there. We're just going to grab these boosts. We're going to head towards the net. We're going to wait for this pop it. Like, no danger. No danger at all. They've over popped it. Now, what I don't want to do is this man here, this goalkeeping position I'm sort of playing. Is I don't want to get lured out to challenge that. Not when I've got two teammates there. They're not going to create. They only create when we get silly. And we dive into corners. If we don't dive into corners, they can't create. Wham! We'll play it to the corner. Hopefully they let me take this mid boost. Because that's what I'm playing for. And we just put a shot towards the net with a bit of like, I obviously wanted to lift that, don't get me wrong. But in the meantime, we're just going to put the shot on to back them up a bit. I'm going to hit that down because I think our teammate was getting bumped. And that's an opening. So we're going to come across here. And I'm going to come here, and then I can't challenge this, can I? Why can't I challenge it? There's a pop. Perfect. Let's get him to repop it. Why can't I challenge that? Why can't I challenge that? Because we are basically... We double coming into the, the backboard. All right, we're just going to wait here. And we don't even need to do anything. GG, well played. Well, there we go. That was a really quick one. Uh, we'll, we'll go again. We'll go one more. I know I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't, but uh, we'll keep going. All right, here we go then. So we're going to front flip. And you guys, uh, if, I, if my voice sounds a bit rough, um, I don't know, it's, I think I'm coming down with something, but uh, it's just pro probably because, uh, you know, I've got real bad hay fever. So that is, uh, I'll be sneezing or boarded. Uh, the good stuff. So we don't need to go for that. Low, low, low risk, uh, sorry, high risk, low reward. We can just sit here, just in case they miss, because that's where the ball's going to go. Because if it's bouncing off a corner, oh, better save that. Oh, did I save the last one? I hope so. Uh, then if it's bounced on the corner, just sort of meet in the middle and then just go backwards from the middle if that makes sense. Oh, nice shot. That was nice. Nice to see some uh, variety here. So we just stay close. We're just going to single jump there. That wasn't what I wanted. I did actually have a little FPS stutter there and it threw me, uh, threw me off a little bit. And we're going to come to the back post. 
And we're going to wait. And we are going to just come backwards. And we're just driving around here. Just driving around. Not really having anything in the game at the moment. Not really doing too much. Uh, no danger. No one's up for it. So we don't need to go. Because we can catch that on the floor. If there's people going, okay, now we're going to block. But I don't have to go up as high as they do. Because I'm blocking it. That's the beauty of it. So I've only got to block this area in net. So why would I need to go up to the ceiling? I don't. I just need to block this angle. Oh, And then I'll make the save. And obviously, if I want to be a bit more aggressive, yes, I can go earlier. But the point is, I don't have to do as much as they do to block it. And that's going to be fine, because our teammate should be front post. So that's absolutely fine. We're just going to push forward, grab this. And we haven't been able to get much going here, because we haven't really clapped them enough. And that's a great shot. And this is where you'd like to see... Yeah, there we go. A hit off the back, off the ceiling, and then we're going to look for stuff. Nearly scored just from that. Just from that simple play, and now we've got the boost start, and that's a goal. Nice shot. So just because we hit it off the ceiling... Pull him under a bit of pressure. Then we look for Demos, forcing JMD to jump, which forces him into a bad spot because he's too far forward. Even that small thing is actually too... Oh, well, well, I don't need to tell you this because we're going to go through it in the replay, aren't we? <laughs> and do let me go know, guys, if this is going on a bit too long between these goals. A couple of people have said that it seemed a bit rushed. I don't want to rush it if you want to know sort of the insides and out here. So this is a really underrated shot, just popping it off the ball. And look, this player is gone. They should not have gone. They would have seen me on the wall. This is why it's, it's just crazy. So just jab it. It puts the ball up. And we always want to get towards the ceiling if we can with these balls. So it'll come down and like hit this area. Sometimes it even goes in and it puts it, it makes it really difficult. You'll also see the defense is stacked on one side. So they don't have any, guess what, outward momentum. So because they don't have any outward momentum, all they can really do is sort of pass the ball away and it's rushed. If they were sat in the right position, they could probably take their time and literally just catch this and take it over there. But they can't, so they're rushed. Again, what do we do, guys? We look for the center and then we look for a boost deal. It's rinse and repeat. Now you've got one in the net because they push forward. So if you look from this perspective at JMD, because they get demoed, they push forward, they need to stop right there or go into net, but they push forward. They're, they're scared. The shot comes on. And they're just going to, unfortunately, get the touch. They were a little bit deeper. I just want you to see, if they would have gone into the favorite position, you can now see they would add so much more time to get outwards momentum. Just going to side flip to the side. And we're just going to come across here. I'm just going to back off. I'm just going to back off. And I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. I don't want to get too caught in with this stuff. I'm just faking. Really, I could have probably gone for that, but we don't need to. Now, again, it's all about... There you go. They're going to look for a demo or a bump because it's not on target. They need to create the target. We're actually going to come off there just to fake them down. Look, we've got two in the net, but they see how shallow they are in their position. See, he's still shallow. So I need to be here because he's too shallow. So it's going to be difficult. They just turn. They don't even go to back post. So there's, And then they're too shallow. So it, it is difficult. Now let's see if they make the save here, which they do. And I'm going to have to come here. So sometimes you do have to do this. Right, we can fake coming up. Hopefully they let me take it. Just fake that. Because he's coming in. See him diving in. If I hit that, I'm going to get dunked. No point. All right. Just don't take the risk. And even though they get the boost and the ball back, we, we're still safe. This is my point. We're still safe. And a good little pop there because it beats them. Because players, you know, they, they don't think like that. So this is going to be a waste of uh, a possession here from them. They're going to just hit it off the backboard. Which means now they have a high recovery and there's an overcommit. And we're just going to wait here. And we go for a high flick. And we're just going to push them back. That's what we do. With a high flick, push them back. Now we look for a demo. And now we've collapsed him again. There's a goal. You know, it's, it's really that simple. You know, high flick, collapse this guy because see how he has to drive backwards. He, he's driving backwards because he's too shallow to begin with. And he's in no man's land. Well, it, make a commitment. Either say, well, I'm going to go for it or I'm not. Don't hang around in no man's land. This play actually starts much earlier than the goal is scored. And I want you to keep your eye on this fellow over here. We're going to put it in blue, actually, for Jane. Wester. Watch what Wester does. And that's why we are pinned in the net. All right. So if you look at Wester, right, we got Ish on the ball. Good stuff. Wester grabs the boost. Brilliant. All he's got to do is rotate behind me and I can start to push out. And my line would be, based on this situation, and the situation is that they are hitting the ball back, I would be very cautious here. Very cautious because I might need to go onto the backboard, okay, if they get a good clear. Wester instead flies forward. As you can see, we've just started to creep out. We're like, oh, it's our opportunity. No, Wester. They say, no, get back in there. All right, so this is what happens in solo queue. Wester starts pushing forward for no real reason. And the 50 is lost. This is important. So now, Wester still isn't back. We are pinned in the net at this point because Wester's still not back. And because of that, we've just lost our confidence in them. When they come back to the net, they come shallow again. 
So when they come back, they come here, they are shallow. We've just heard this, we need them there, or we'd like even a replacement there, or even a backboard touch. We've already on the ground, head onto the backboard. Anything's better than this shallow position. From here, the double touch, I, like, I can't defend this double touch. This player has to go onto the backboard to defend the double touch. I could have if I was allowed out on net earlier on to get onto the backboard, but now I can't. So this is the layers of the game what I was talking about. But I'm not too fussed because the angle they're taking that double touch is very low percentage. So as long as we are behind the net, not in front of it, we are able to get outward momentum. Now from here, as soon as you flick it, you see JMD is heading back towards the net. This is where you can stay close to the ball. You don't need to back off here. Like you don't need to jump and challenge this because look at their boost momentum line again, guys. See it? It's very faint. But you see how they're going this way and then they're coming across, but then they're challenging the ball, they're going to try and move this way. That is just waste of energy. It's inefficient. So we don't need to worry about that. If they hit it, it's literally just going to pinch across here. And then look, it's a free ball anyway with a one-on-one. -on -one. So that's why you don't even need to go for those. People go for way, way too many balls that are pointless. We get a free ball because of it. This player, instead of ro rotating around the back, away from the play, comes across. So now I can take even more time. I get it into a good position. I try and keep my, my boost stable. Okay, I don't want any jagged movements. And I get a flick. The problem is this player is the last man. Where are they? They've just spawned. And look at them pushing up, pushing up. Ready? I'm pushing up. And then they have to break. They didn't even need to. They, they'd have to wait here. They'd have to wait here and try and waste some time. Or do a real quick fake challenge into a shadow. But instead, they just go directly towards the ball and then slam their brakes on. That, therefore, they have backwards momentum. And they are boosting against themselves to push it forward. If the player here didn't push up so far, that's already a goal. So straight away, we're going to look for a bump demo or a force jump. So we force them to do what they don't want to do. Wester comes in, shoots the ball on net, and that's going to be it because they were further back. So that just shows how easy that can be. That's really bad, that, that second touch. Uh, we're going to try and just take that to the side. The, that may not have been the best thing to do, and I'm just going to do that. And I've got to get out of here because I am causing more problems than I'm doing positive right there. That's a great dunk. That could be a goal again. That's a shame, but but it leads to that. You see how they just grab that boost? And then I grab this boost. And now I can tell you, this guy's got about 20 if he's lucky. Maybe 12. Then he kicked that pad. He might have had nothing. I'm just going to come over the top here. Both players have gone. That's a bit of a shame. Both players went there. We need to get a touch on that. Jeez. Um, but I'm just, again, I'm not actually going for it necessarily. I'm just blocking. I'm just blocking away. No mechanics, baby. We don't need to do too much. We're going to come here. We're going to fake. And then they come for the demo instead of the ball. And now we get a free ball. So we single jump. And that's a shame that they cut in front of me there. Okay, I shouldn't have done that. Um, that's a great pass. I probably shouldn't have scored that, to be fair. That's probably a bit mechanical. Um, but basically, see how this guy comes in? Well, they come in from the outside in. So we're never going to get that. A uh, great little outlet pass. You, I mean, it's not mechanical, really. It is literally a single jump there. Uh, we're on a massive win streak. And right, now how many people would try and hit this? Again, there's that little fake, that little shuffle fake. Boom. And what it does is it throws this player off because this player doesn't know what to do there. And they're like, oh, is he going to hit it? I didn't expect him to. And now they go for a demo. They use their boost, which means we can just grab this boost. And we have took them off the play. I like their boost card. It's great. And we've got a free player out the play and a free boost. And guess what? This gives us a free ball. Now, inside to outside. And I want you to look at this. Now, you can see the difference here. We go in slow motion. They're already tilting their car. Okay, they're, they're, they've jumped too high and they're tilting their car for some bizarre reason. We are right solid from where they're going to be. So we are central based on their position. And what I mean by that is because they're on the outside, their hit is going to push the ball like towards this direction. And I'm actually slightly off here, like to here, knowing that their next touch is basically going to center it with my car. This is why inside to outside works so well, because you know what they're going to do. So let's have a look if that happens. Yes, it does. You see how it basically forces it perfectly into the center of my hitbox? Easy 50-50 win. It isn't luck. It's complete science. We come down and we're actually going to redo this, okay? Once we get this 50 win, Ishiwada has got momentum, but they don't need to go here. They really don't need to go because we are right there. And look at their position as we go around here. They are already in the air. They are already in the air. They've already given away what they want to do. And they've lost efficiency because you're not as fast in the air on the as you are on the ground. So they should have just came here. And they could have then jumped like this and won that 50. But they don't. They jump way too early. Then they flip. And the act of flipping, this is why flipping is dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, they are flipping themselves 
away from the ball. They are flipping in this direction. This is going to take them off the ball, which means they're going to lose this 50 guaranteed. They're actually going to filter it towards the net. And this is exactly what happens. Then the 50 comes in. Now, we've just lost a brilliant line. We we're going to get another 50 like that. And it pushes the ball away. And then it forces a double commit. This is why people, if you see someone in front of you, you don't always have to go towards the ball. Thankfully, Wester is in a good spot. Now, if I'm picking, you could probably be here, Wester, and come out from here just in case. But this is fine because that 50 could have been more volatile and it could have a bit of height. Now, from here, though, we have drawn two of them into the corner. And we know JMD is going backwards and they've already started facing towards the players, the last man. The exit here is fantastic. And we know we can take this shot because we know JMD is all the way over there and we've pinned two in the net. So this is actually really good. And it's the first time in the whole series someone has actually cleared towards where we are. All you have to do here is double jump. You don't need anything special. And you're looking to just tap it with like the nose corner of the car and it will just fly into there. Now, I think that was like 120 some kilometers and it's going to be impossible for this player to save. It will literally be impossible. A massive thank you uh, again, guys, all the support, the comments. It really does help because I'm learning. I like to say I'm learning and I appreciate you guys for helping me learn. So have a nice day. Have a nice life wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I do appreciate you and look after yourself and peace out. Peace, peace, peace.